Are you new to working out and want to build muscle fast? The advice I'll be sharing throughout this video will set you up for success and accelerate your progress. But why should you listen to me? I've been training consistently for 10 years, I run an Australian certified personal training and coaching business, and I've won numerous gold medals on stage in natural bodybuilding. In other words, you can say I'm an expert in the field. So let's get started answering some of the most common questions beginners have when it comes to building muscle fast. How many days should I train per week? As a beginner, I would always recommend sticking between three and five days of resistance training. The reason that's important is that's gonna give you enough stimulus and frequency in order to adequately train each muscle group. That's also gonna give you enough time to rest and recover. If I was to give you an example of a three-day workout split versus a five-day workout split, it would look like this. A push-pull leg split for a three-day workout split, split across Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tuesday and Thursday is full rest. Saturday and Sunday is active rest. So active rest means just doing some form of light cardio between 20 and 30 minutes. A five-day workout split you can do a full bodybuilding split, or you can stick to a push-pull leg split again. But let's switch it up. Let's say I give you a full bodybuilding split. So you do chest and triceps, legs, abs, back and biceps, shoulders, triceps, legs and abs. And then you just rinse and repeat. Of course, you can cater your workout split towards your schedule, but at least make sure you are training consistently at the same time each day. So for example, if you have the three-day workout split, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, push, pull, legs. Make sure you're training at the same time each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Try not to deviate too much as consistency is the key to progress. How long should my workouts be? Again, another great question. For the majority of my clients who are beginners to intermediates, I always suggest they stick between 45 minutes and one hour and 15 minutes. Typically, the recommendation is exactly one hour for each workout, and that's what I program for, so I give them enough exercises for one hour. Even at my training age now, 10 years into lifting, I'm an athlete. I don't even exceed one hour and 30 minutes. That's assuming I don't program extra cardio at the end of my workout. Now, keep in mind, the time that you are dedicating to your workout consists of your warm-up, your workout, as well as your cooling down and stretching. So everything should fit into that one hour block, or between 45 minutes and one hour and 15 minutes. Now the reason I don't suggest you train for less than 45 minutes, you're not gonna learn much, you're not gonna progress fast enough. Like, less than 45 minutes is not enough time, especially when you are condensing all three of those things, four of those things, if I'm including stretching. So, not less than 45 minutes, typically not more than one hour and 15 minutes, especially if you have focused intensity within the gym. What exercises should I start with? Always begin with compound exercises first. So any exercise that's going to involve multiple muscle groups or joints at the same time. Perfect examples, bent over Smith machine row, barbell squat, lat pull down, deadlift, the list goes on. An isolation exercise example is a bicep curl and that involves one joint, one muscle group. The reason why you prioritize compound exercises first, they will always maximize your strength gains, your muscle gains, and build you a very solid foundation, especially as a beginner. Now, let's say you had multiple compound exercises in one workout. Let's say I was doing a back and bicep workout. I had a T-bar row, a lat pull down, and a Ben Ava Smith machine row all in one workout. You structure it based on the difficulty. Which one is the most challenging for you that elevates your heart rate the highest? For me, that would be T-bar row first, bent over Smith machine row second, then lat pull down, then my bicep curls. That's the best way I can explain what exercises you should be prioritizing within your workouts. How many sets and repetitions should I do? This is a very intricate question because for every single training age, beginners, novices, intermediates, advanced, and athletes, they all have different recommendations. So let's just focus on beginners. For all your workouts, for all your exercises from start to finish, three sets, <laughs> three sets 
per exercise. If you are under a time crunch, so you only have 45 minutes for your workouts, for your last two or last exercise, you can drop it down to two working sets. Keep in mind though, that those two sets must be extremely intense, of high intensity, and of high focus. So you can't half ask that it needs to be quality. Let's shift to repetitions. You will typically hear that the perfect repetition of building muscle is between eight and 12 repetitions. Now, that is true. That is called hypertrophy. For beginners, however, I would not recommend that only because you are under a time crunch and as a beginner, you must learn everything. The basics of technique, tempo, time and attention, uh, mind to muscle contraction. So as a result, I would recommend beginners stick between 10 and 20 repetitions, even bumping up to 30 repetitions if you really want to dial in on technique, form, tempo. Majority of the time, 10 to 20 repetitions, sometimes 30 repetitions. Should I do cardio as well? Yes. For the majority of people, adding cardio is absolutely beneficial. You are gonna increase your cardiovascular endurance, improve your overall health, and especially if your main goal is also to lose weight and lose fat, in addition to building muscle, adding cardio on top of your weight training routine is perfect. Keep in mind, in order to lose weight, you must be in a caloric deficit. Cardio is a tool to put yourself in a further caloric deficit because now you are burning more calories than you are consuming. So if you aren't already adding cardio, do what I do. Add cardio at the beginning and end of your workouts. It can only be for five to 10 minutes. That's all you need, three to four times per week. Or you can just structure it like this. A total of one hour to one hour and a half of cardio per week. This cardio, by the way, is very low intensity. Just walking on the treadmill, low intensity, steady state, that's called. And if you want to have a more measurable approach, put your hands on the heartbeat sensors, keep your heart rate between 120 and 160. No less, no more. What should I eat before and after my workouts? Again, this recommendation is gonna be different for absolutely everyone specifically their schedules. For example, I train first thing in the morning between 5.30 and 6 a.m. I don't eat before my workout, hell no. But I do consume something in the middle of my workout to just keep me going and top up my energy and my carbohydrate stores. That usually consists of maybe an oat bar, a fruit, or some sort of quick absorbing lolly. Now, the majority of people don't train first thing in the morning. So for those of you, one to two hours before your workout, I would suggest and oatmeal, I would suggest fruit, chicken and rice, just a quick avocado toast with salami, anything. Anything that involves all three macronutrients, protein, fats, and carbs, it must be complex, however. Not some random take or egg garbage because that's just gonna tank you before your workout. After your workouts, always refuel your body. Again, with protein, carbohydrates, and healthy fats. The recommendation, again, literally anything. Yogurt, banana, any whole foods that contain a balance of all three macronutrients. The same is consistent before as well as after your workout. Slightly less before, because you don't want a really full stomach before your workout, and slightly more after in order to replenish your hard working day and your hard working workout. How do I know that I'm lifting the right amount of weight? You know this when you start a set and you start off with perfect or good form and as you reach the end of the set, it starts to become a challenge. Or in other words, towards the end of the set, you near or reach something called technical failure. Technical failure is when your form starts to slightly shift or slightly falter, not completely falter. If your technique and form completely falters, that's called complete failure and complete failure is not what you're looking for. Another way to measure this, if you come off of the set and you require an extensive amount of rest, the weight's too heavy. If you can redo or complete another set between 90 seconds and two minutes, that's how you know the weight is perfect. If you come off of a set like that and you didn't near or reach technical failure or it wasn't a challenge whatsoever and you still maintained perfect form, perfect technique right through the entire set, that means it's way too light. When you come off of a set like that, usually you're able to complete and start the next set within 60 seconds as well. So that's how you know you need to lift and increase the weight. Sam, 
How important is rest and recovery? Absolutely non-negotiable. Equally, if not more important than your training itself. Understand that when you go to the gym, you are simply tearing your muscle fibers. It is in those rest days, it can either be full rest or active rest, where you grow, repair, build, and develop your muscles so they come back bigger and stronger than before. Make sure you are sleeping between 7 and 9 hours consistently per night. Making up for sleep on the weekend is not a thing. You need to consistently be sleeping between 7 and 9 hours per night. You can also include stretching to improve recovery and increase blood flow. There are multiple strategies as well for recovery, but we're not going to get into that for today. What if I'm not seeing progress? You've been lifting hard, training like an animal in the gym, yet you still can't seem to build muscle. The main reason is that you aren't putting yourself in a caloric surplus. So in order to build muscle consistently over the long term and not hit plateaus, as a beginner, you're going to build muscle no matter what, but you might run into a brick wall, especially if you aren't consuming enough food. So make sure you're consuming enough food, enough protein to promote muscle growth, to promote protein muscle synthesis. And in addition to that, every single workout, every single exercise from week to week, make sure you are progressive overloading. That is the most critical term for you in order to build muscle fast. You can do this through one of these strategies or a number of these strategies. Improving your technique, improving your tempo, improving your time under tension, improving your weight, so increasing the amount of weight you're lifting for that particular exercise. The list goes on. Reps, sets, etc, etc. As long as you are progressing, you're learning and you're improving, every single time you do that set, that workout, that exercise, that's called progressive overload. That's how you continue to see progress within the gym. That's how you continue to see strength gains, continue to build a solid foundation, and continue to see muscle gains. Should I take supplements? <laughs> uh, I get asked this every single day too. Understand that a supplement is just that. It supplements your diet. Above all else, focus your time and attention first on your diet. For example, your goal is to build muscle fast. Thus, you must be in a caloric surplus. In order to aid you, I would recommend a protein supplement because nine out of 10 people don't consume enough protein. Doesn't matter what the hell it is, protein is protein. But if you really want the cream of the crop, opt for a protein isolate. And the king of all kings when it comes to supplements is creatine. Every single human being, irrespective of if they weightlift or not, irrespective of their shape and size, should be consuming creatine. That is my ultimate recommendation because not only is it going to improve your performance inside of the gym, it's going to improve your performance outside of the gym, as well as improve your brain function amongst other things. Now, do your own research, but you'll find that creatine has the most amount of research on the face of the planet. It is the most studied researched supplement that exists, the cheapest, most affordable, and the highest quality supplement that exists, all natural by the way, and that's pretty much it. Protein, creatine, the only two recommendations that I would suggest you take, especially as a beginner. You really don't need it, but if you find that you need some sort of energy um, for your workouts, then a pre-workout supplement. I train first thing in the morning. I don't need pre-workout for my workouts. I'm alert and hyperactive first thing in the morning, so yeah. That's my recommendation, and that pretty much wraps up the Q&A for today's video. If you liked, learned something from today's video, please consider dropping me a like, subscribing to the channel, commenting below, and if you want to debate me down in the comment section, feel free to. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.